All right, welcome to another episode from the Chart Readers. We are gonna take a look at the weed sector starting with Tilray and ACB. And man, all I'm doing right now is looking at this 20 moving average line and just hating it so much. I, I often call that the peskiest of the lines. And I mean, this right here, the last, what, three weeks just screams it, right? There were some nice profits to be made if we broke that. I was confident it was gonna happen right here as well, right? So I'm not even pretending that this thing didn't fool me, but man, I hate the 20 moving average, especially when you're under it. Believe me, I love it when you're over it, because just as hard as it is to break above it, it becomes, and I got a zoomed, I guess we found one right, it becomes just as hard to lose it, you know, but yeah, once you do, it's real bad, right? So man, the 20, I, I, I hope that's jumping out at you as well, okay? Real quick, before we go any deeper, what are we gonna do today? Same thing we always do, right? We'll take a look at the daily and the weekly to see how this thing is setting up short term. We have our five moving averages. There's only one, but I do draw horizontal support and resistance lines manually, and then when we're done up here, we'll use the MACD, RSI, and volume as our lower indicators. Hey, really quickly, if you can please like and subscribe, it does really well with the YouTube algorithms, but hey, even if you don't, just thank you so much for watching these, okay? And then look, I am not perfect, I am not all-knowing, I do not have a crystal ball in front of me, so yeah, if you disagree with anything, just throw it in the comments, all right? We're simply educated people sharing our opinions with each other, all right? Um, really quickly, I adjusted the candle settings on the video. So you are now gonna see more outlined green, filled in green, outlined red, filled in red. If you don't know what that means, check out the video I just made about setting up your charts. I do talk about that new candlestick setup that we did. It is significantly, significantly better, I promise you that much, okay? Um, look, let's get into the details, all right? So obviously, I kind of said it already, right? I think the whole story here is the 20 moving average. I was confident here, right? I'm not pretending I didn't get this wrong. Sadly, you can see the charts now going down instead of up, right? And it really does, I think, have to do more with the 20 moving average than this 266 line that I drew. Because again, I put way more emphasis on the moving averages when we're within them. Once we're above or below them, that's when I kind of need to use my lines. Because again, we just don't have the, the five MAs anymore, right? But Ah, man, it, it, it is what it is, and, and more than anything, I hope it just reaffirms why I just, I, I sincerely believe in the eight and 20 just so much. It really is my rule one and rule 1.5, right? If you're under the eight, bad things will happen. You need to be over the eight and the 20 to really be in a good place to do well, right? So, it, it just, it, it's disappointing, I'm telling you, and, and there's, 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 you just, you know, I'm not here blaming manipulation, I'm not here blaming shorts, I'm actually not even here blaming the, like, lack of federalization and stuff like that. I really believe that these lines do more to stock stuff than, than really a lot of people want to, you know, want to put credit to it, and hey, I'm not here defending it, right, I'm not here saying that it, it's right or wrong, but yeah, it's, it's, these lines suck to break, right? So there's not too, too much more I have to say except for this, all right? I do not like that right there. Volume has significantly been dropping, right? We were at a place where we were riding the 50 moving average a couple days above it. The days above it were actually all green candles except for the one at the end, right? So it seemed like we were actually trying to like maybe improve the 50 moving average or at least stay there, right? We are now well back under and we have that pretty nasty downtrend that I don't like. Look, volume is king. I think it's really important to make sure you know what volume looks like, you know what I mean? So what does the weekly look like? Look, again, bad things happen under the eight moving average. And the fact that it's on the weekly makes it five times worse on the daily, right? Because it takes five dailies to make a candle here on the weekly and you need most of the five or at least the majority of the money moved in that five to be bad to stay under the eight on the weekly, right? So. Um, yeah, look, end of the day, also where are we? We're under all five moving averages on the weekly. That is not good, right? We 
better. We, I mean, I, like, I'm not going to draw the line, but losing 250, losing 248 would be really bad because that would have me extra concern on the weekly chart, which makes it that much worse on the daily, right? What does 250 look like? Or sorry, 248. It's, it's not the bottom of that. That's obviously the super scary number. But yeah, I think the top, I, I could see that. I could. And again, we're, we're like, this was my original all time low support, right? I will now lower it. Sorry to zoom in like that so much, but I'll go ahead and lower it to this right there. It's the bottom of that guy. But losing 236 will make this go down deeper for sure, right? So cannot lose that. And again, back on the weekly, we cannot lose 248 because in my opinion, if you lose 248, 236 won't have much of a chance, honestly. So um, Tilly, I, I'm sorry. I am sorry. ACB, Aurora, ACB, Aurora. Oh, okay. I'll be honest, this is not the chart I expected to see here, all right? Definitely not a great chart. I'm not, I'm not gonna say it's a great chart. However, there are some positive things that I can see here. First off, look, we were going away from the eight to the eight, away from the eight to the eight, away from the eight to the eight. Now we're just kind of staying on the eight and I'm cool with that because staying on the eight is the first thing you got to do before you can actually get over the eight. Yeah, obviously you can like do a crazy meme day or whatever it is and just like rip through it. But let's be honest, ACB is not that kind of stock. So the fact that it's holding on to the eight does mean a lot to me. Yeah, we closed over it for sure that day. We obviously did it right there as well so I for I obviously care less about one day than than the second day but for ACB especially I think I don't really care until we crack the 20 as well you know what I mean I think this stock has proven enough bad to where I think I have a, a little higher uh, criteria for entry here that said look at what I see I'm gonna go from here I'm gonna just draw looks like I'm gonna draw till there and I'll show you why till there. It hits that tip right there. There's a baby break of the trend, but no, as I look at it, I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna call this a downtrend break at all. I think we gotta break that 20 to really, I, I was trying to make something there, I, I'll be honest. And really, as I zoom out a bit, I think what it actually is is this. That probably would make a little more sense. Oh, okay, we're actually still not that far from that because it's basically corner of that, corner of that, and it actually does hit corner of that. We're on the downtrend, and you've got the MACD and RSI peaking with a little bit interesting volume going up, right? Tilly was coming down, this one kind of, this might be interesting. Actually, I'll be honest with you, because hey, if you can break that, which probably looks like, what is it at, 72, 73? 73, yeah, if you break 73, there's a decent reason to believe you'll probably come into the 80s and adding 10 cents is a little more than 10%. So I mean, hey, that's interesting. And look, I think if ACB can drop a 10% candle, I gotta believe that'll be good for the sector because if this bad boy can make some money, you gotta believe a couple other ones might, but um, I, I didn't expect that. I, I'll be honest, I did not expect that from ACB. This is a little bit better of a chart than I imagined. However, end of the day, we've been close to breaking the eight a bunch of times and then failed and gone down, right? We've actually had a decent MACD right here. I mean, sorry, a decent RSI right here. Not really the MACD behind it, but better volume. We had at least a couple. So just don't over anticipate the break, but yeah, an alert right here at 73, maybe, oh yeah, maybe even 74 if you want, just to be a little safer. Because again, going from 74 to 80, that's even to 80, yeah, because the bottom of this guy is 80, 81. Even 74 to just straight 80 is basically your 10%, a little under, right? Because you're adding six instead of seven, but ACB, this is probably the most bullish I've been in what has to be a long time. Look, this is not a good weekly chart, right? There's there's actually nothing even kind of showing the, the up yet. But what it has been doing has been saying, doji, doji, doji. Let's wait for next week. Let's wait for next week. Let's wait for next week. I think this might be the next week that either goes up to, again, this 80 line, right? That is the 20 moving average, or it's going to just 
deuce a red hard candle, right? So I probably would want a couple more indicators. This is where I would actually probably want to turn to my the one just to see a few more things. But on the daily, it looks decent. On the weekly, not so much. So maybe it's gonna be more of just like a quick pop and drop. I might kind of keep that in the back pocket, which really probably makes a little more sense with the stock that we're looking at, right? So um, yeah, all that said, hey, if you disagree with anything, please throw it in the comments. Otherwise, I sincerely appreciate your time and thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.